Hi everyone, I'm Tao Xinye. I'm a senior engineer from PinCap, which is a company behind Tai TV. In the past few months, my team and I has put in a lot of efforts to make Tai TV work better on cloud storage. And today I'm gonna share with you some of those new improvements that we are very excited about. Just before we dive in, I think we should get a basic understanding of the situation first. Let's take a look at TechEV. Long story short, it is a distributed storage engine. Unlike traditional storage engines that serve from a single machine, it has the capability to scale out normally to hundreds of nodes. And we need to replicate both WAL and data files to provide high availability, which is actually one of the reasons that we are willing to tolerate the complexity of a distributed system. Now let's move on to the hardware side. Nowadays, most public cloud vendors provide virtualized disks. And those disks can be mounted to a local file system and they appear like a local disk as well. But internally, they're forwarding the IOs to multiple remote disks that are potentially shared by multiple users. EBS, for instance, will replicate any write IOs to three different locations. And this internal complexity can be a real problem for our systems because the latency for starter is obviously higher than a local disk. Also, since you are sharing hardware with other users, anything that you use will be charged. That includes disk bandwidth and IOPS. Finally, we should all know that cloud infrastructure are not always as reliable as they claim it to be. Service degradation will be relatively frequent and it should be considered in our system design. Ideally, we want to make a large type V cluster behave similarly to a traditional RDBMS. But unfortunately, it's actually hard to accomplish that on a cloud storage. First, we want to build a scalable service. The scale means more failures. To be more specific, we are worried that as a system, the hardware the storage hardware performance is more likely to degrade because on a larger scale, a real event will not be so rare anymore. The cost is a problem too because every storage operation is charged by the cloud vendors. The users now have more reasons to care about exactly how and why our system is using those resources. And by that, I mean read and write amplification, which is the amount of vials the system needs to issue before finishing one user request. Here, I drew a simple graph to demonstrate our system's runtime usage of IO resources. Over time, the user writes are very stable, as you can see from the yellow bar there, but they are amplified multiple times because of background writes. And that includes compaction, compaction and garbage collection. In addition to that, large events incur actual IOs that are usually not so predictable. From this graph, we can see that the most straightforward way to reduce cost and improve scalability is to keep IO usage under the hardware watermark at all times. And for that, we introduced two new features, which I'm gonna talk about in details. First, we have Raft Engine. It is a new log store for Tai TV that is written in Rust, just like Tai TV. And for those who don't know it, we previously used RocksDB to store all transaction logs. Clearly it's not a optimal choice, but uh, it is a decent solution at the early stage of development. But right now, 
we want to replace it and improve it. The primary goal here is to write less than the rock CB. Consequently, we can reduce IO cost and reduce the possibility of hitting storage performance limits. Of course, we have a secondary goal here is to improve the performance as well, but it is not being actively working on at the moment. And we are really hoping that more contributors can join us to improve it in the future. Now let's talk about how exactly we accomplish the primary goal, which is actually very simple. Raft engine maintains an in-memory index of all log entries. The reason we do that is not to improve read performance. It's actually about reducing the background works. In RocksDB, compaction is needed to keep all data sorted and clean up deleted data. But in Raft Engine, we don't need to sort anything. And garbage collection doesn't need to read out obsolete data because we already have a map of all active data in the memory. And then Raft Engine further reduces foreground IOs by compression. All log entries are compressed with LZ4 before they are actually written to the log files. Mainly with those two techniques, we are able to reduce nearly 30% of all server write. And uh, in practice, that is a very improvement, very good improvement that we can use. After that, we have another feature called the priority IO scheduling. It is not a new thing. Many systems already have it. What we managed to do is to add this functionality without introducing major change of architecture. By that, I mean, we did not change the internal tasking system of TyKV. No additional IO queuing is required and no extra overhead at all. The algorithm is again, very simple. We first trace and categorize all system IOs into three different priorities. We can call it A, B, and C here. During the execution, we periodically assign individual IO limits to those priorities. In the beginning, the IO limits are all very high. All IOs run with no restrictions. Eventually, as you can see here at Epoch 2, the IO usage exceeds a predetermined global limit, which is what we call an overflow. After the overflow epoch, we will adjust the IO limits for lower priorities to make sure that in the next epoch, system will not use so much IO resource. And here in specific, we will make the IO limits for priority B and C much smaller than Epoch 2. And after, th after that, in Epoch 3, the global IO usage of the system will be decreased under the predetermined limit. As you can see, the algorithm is not perfect. It tolerates short period of overflow, but in practice, it works exceedingly well. Here, internally, we conducted a test to simulate large events during online workload. In this test, a large table is mounted, is imported while a TPCC workload is running. After applying the priority IO scheduling, as you can see on the left-hand side, the system performance is much more stable than before. Well, that's pretty much all the features that I want to cover today. Other than that, there are a few more important things that we are experimenting with. The CPU limiting feature, for instance, is a new strategy that we are pushing for low resource environments, such as four core machines. Basically, we want to smoothly apply back, back pressure 
to the user before system is overloaded and the raft witness. It is an attempt to reduce replication costs by using a write-only node that only replicates transaction log but no readable data. In the future, we want TechEV to further adapt to cloud hardware, and we truly hope that the community, community users can benefit from our works here. So thanks again for joining me here today, and goodbye.